what's up guys welcome back now let's have a look at case three if you have not watched case one and case two please go back and watch those two videos so that you are able to understand this one right here now we are doing case number three where a graph is given and then let's just mark them here we know that this is f of x and then therefore this is g of x right so now let's have a look at this ones here and see how would you deal with a situation where one graph is over the other in this situation where f a graph which is f of x is over the other graph you treat it the same as when they are multiplying each other the conditions are the same the only difference here is that g of x this one that is at the bottom you cannot allow it to be zero therefore it means when it get to the x intercept uh, you need to make sure that even if the sign is given as greater or less or equal to you must use these ones greater or less okay not equal to because now if you say equal to it means therefore here you are dividing by zero and we know what happens when you divide by zero okay so we don't have to divide by zero i'll put a big x here so that we don't have to divide by zero so please take note of this guys this is very very crucial when we are dealing with a function where it's dividing they are dividing each other even though uh, we still in this case going to look at at the x uh, intercept i hope you guys still remember when do we look at the intersection so here we're looking at the x intercept okay you look at the x-intercept okay here we go only have two x-intercept here guys so we are gonna look at this one this is stage one we're gonna have stage two like xcom we're also going to have stage three but remember when we reach this point here i'm going to circle it out should i circle it out i think i should when we reach these two points here whether we are given greater or equal to we need to make sure that our g of x does not become zero and then we are dividing by zero thereof all right okay great stuff so now let's see and uh, now let's do this one now let's have a look at the first question it says that i'm gonna write this one in red a the first question is saying f of x over a uh, g of x uh, less or equal to zero okay so it means in this instant you are looking for a situation where when you put the values of x in any of these functions you are going to get you should be able to get um a, a plus here or a negative there then it will be less than zero or a negative here or a plus here so you are looking for a situation where uh, one of this graph is on top of the x-axis and the other one it's below the x-axis please don't forget guys we said on top of the axis is a positive below the x-axis it's a negative sign don't forget this all right so now let's have a look at this one here uh, in the first stage we can see that f of x is above the x-axis and then uh, g of x is below so therefore stage one is satisfied the second stage is not satisfied they are all below the x-axis and the third stage they are all above the x-axis therefore this is also not satisfied so now how are you going to classify this you are going to classify this like in this way here you are going to say you are going to say right here uh, that x oh, okay excuse me you're going to say x is the element of all real numbers starting from negative infinity up until negative six but remember you don't include the six so you're gonna be like that so therefore you're going to say in uh, inequality notation you're going to for all the values where x is less than negative six remember guys you're not gonna put equal to here because if you put equal to here g of x will be zero and we can't divide by zero okay i hope it's clear guys uh, and then let me just move to a next color here 
we are doing B now and then I'm going to remove this one uh, this one here to remove this one and then remove that one is for the previous question okay let's see B it says here f of x all over g of x is uh, greater or equal to zero you are looking for a situation where f of x is positive and then uh, g of x is positive or both of them are negative and negative because they will give us a positive answer all right so please guys go through stage one and two while i take five seconds then i will show you the answer All right, great. If you don't have the answer by now, please, uh, you can pause this video and then uh, do it alone and then continue watching after that. All right. Okay. So now uh, let's look at this one. Uh, both F, F of X is above the X is this is Y. So this is positive and negative. So stage one is not satisfied here. Both of them, they are below the X axis. So they will be negative, negative. Therefore, stage two satisfied. And then stage three is satisfied because they are all above the X axis. All right. So now let's look at uh, this one, how you are going to deal with this one. You are going to classify this portion here in the middle you are going to say x is the element but be careful not to include six you are going to say here uh, negative negative a uh, negative six even though they said greater or equal to guys remember we don't want x to be zero therefore we don't put equal sign okay negative up until two and then or what else from two up until positive infinity all right and therefore we're going to classify this one in terms of a uh, inequality notation where x is greater than negative six but less than two we don't put inequality sign here because we don't want our x to be zero and therefore or or also when x is greater than two okay i hope it's clear guys you fully understand this why am i not putting the equality sign we don't put the equality sign because of this condition where we cannot cannot be zero so therefore we use only greater or equal to regardless of whether the question is giving us that because we don't want our g of x to be zero i hope you guys fully understand that now let's go to c let's go to c now i'm going to remove this ones from the previous question there you go i hope you guys understand please guys take your time and like this video share this video with your friends your family and then also subscribe i am gastin mapala i really enjoy doing this video for you guys and if you don't understand please leave a comment on the comment section below we will make a dedicated video to you assisting you directly all right or you can reach out to me via whatsapp then i can assist you there individually all right so let's come here it says here g of x all over f of x i don't think this one here i was just trying to show what happens if you are given a less than zero all right so this one shouldn't be a train smash let's have a look at uh, uh, let's have a look at this question right here it says you must look for a situation where boy when both functions are divided by each other they must give us less than zero all right so in stage one other one is above the other one is below therefore the answer will be less than zero here yeah, stage two no and then stage three not all right so now we need to classify that part there is say x is the element you are going to have negative infinity is two six no not six but rather negative six i mean to say negative six close bracket and then therefore in sigma notation it will just be x is less than negative six 
and that's how you deal with a question like this one guys i hope it's clear and straightforward one thing i must say if there was another x intercept like i studied on the previous video we were going to include it here as part of the vertical lines whether the x intercept is from a parabola a straight line it does not matter we need to include it i think we should do an example where we have got um hyperbola i mean yeah but i will do that one uh, a special video for that one so that because if you have got a hyperbola let me just uh, put it here if you've got a hyperbola okay guys if you've got a hyperbola you need to include the lines of asymptote as part of the vertical lines line of asymptotes you need to include this line of asymptotes as as part of uh, the lines that classify the stages so if we had a line of asymptote here it means we're going to have four stages so i hope you guys understand that because remember line of asymptote is a part where the graph can't touch so now even if we're looking for the values of x we know that there's a value of x that we can touch which is the line of asymptotes so we'll just do one uh, where we have got a hyperbola guys please uh, uh, don't leave now we need to see, you need to see this one let me see you on the next upload where we'll be doing case four which will be the summary of everything that we have learned from case one up until uh, case three so please make sure that after this video you watch the next video i am gustin mapala see you on this video